Okay, so now we're given the derivative, a graph of the derivative, and what does the original function look like? Okay, so let's do a little table about what the derivative is doing and what the slope of the derivative is doing, which is f double prime. I don't know what that was, but I'll fix it. Yeah, that's the f double prime. Ah, you know what I mean. Okay, so because it's above zero, everywhere it's above zero, so we have positive derivatives. Okay, so we know that the derivative is positive everywhere. Okay, so the the function itself has to have an increasing slope everywhere. And what about the derivative of the line here? And it's zero everywhere. So there's no concavity. So we're probably dealing with a straight line. And we see that the slope is actually 2 of the original function. Here's the, a graph of the slope. Okay. The slope is 2. So up 1 over 2, and up 2 over 1. And there you have it. Now, this is only a possible answer because if you think about it, anything parallel could be the right answer. Okay. Now, let me elaborate a little bit more on that. What I mean is if f of x equals 2x, which is the graph I just showed, f prime of x is going to equal 2. Okay? Just like here, here's f prime of x, here's f of x, how uh, we graphed it, equals 2x. This is a graph of f equals 2x, well, close enough. Ah, there you go. So, what happens if I have f of x, whoa, f of x equals not f prime of x, excuse me, equals 2x plus 3. f prime of x would still equal 2. Okay, So you'll still get this as f prime of x. However, it can be any infinite, infinite amount of choices as long as it's parallel. As long as the slope is 2, you could have any graph uh, as long as it's parallel. That's why it means possible choice. That's what it means by possible choice instead of possible, I mean, exact choice. What's the uh, the only option? And there is no only options here because we're not considering what the constant is. Uh, try letter B. Set up the F prime on your own and F double prime. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause it because I'll give you the answer in 3, 2, 1. Bam, there it is. How'd you do? Pretty easy, right? Hopefully. And anything below here is negative, okay? And then anything above here is positive. So here's our critical point. So we've got negative slopes here. Over here, the graph should have a positive slope. That's positives. Okay. What about f prime? What's the slope of this? The only thing we know about the slope is that it's positive everywhere it's positive everywhere so it's concave up everywhere okay so here we have a negative slope for f prime the negative slope until we get to this point so we get to this point and here we got the positive slope okay i mean sorry here we have the yeah positive slope that's represented right here and the whole thing's concave up the whole interval so we have a concave up graph all right try the next example we got example two, letter C. Ready? I'm going to go ahead and set up. Okay, set you up there, and uh, I'll show the answer in three, two, one, and booyah. There you go. Okay, F single prime, first prime of Apophis. Just kidding. First prime right here is negative. Okay. Where does it change from negative? It always stays negative, but let's keep in mind this is a point right here where it becomes zero, okay, where the slope is zero. What am I doing? That's not up there. It's down here. Sorry, guys. No, no, I'm right. Going crazy. Okay, negative, negative, all the way through. It's below the zero. Right here, it's actually zero, okay? And so we have a negative slope here, a zero slope here, and then a negative slope here. Let's look at concavity. Uh, right here we have positive slopes. Okay, so positive slopes. 
All right, it changes here, negative slopes. Okay, so we have concave up from the left of zero, and we have concave down to the right of zero. And there you have it, concave up. Here's your inflection point, and concave down. Try letter D, ready? I'm gonna give you the answer in three, two, one. Hello, there you are, hope you did it. Now, let's go up and set you up with your tables everywhere. It's negative except for this point right here, so mark that point. Okay, so we have negative slopes, negative slopes right here. The slope is zero. Okay, now let's look at F double prime. It's positive all the way up to number one. Okay, and to the left, it's negative. So we have concave up, concave down, where it changes. Just keep in mind that's an inflection point. Okay, we had one here too. Inflection point where the concavity changes. So there you go, concave up, concave down. And there you have it. Okay. Now, try letter C and E, and I'm going to give you the answers to both in three, two. Well, I'll just explain it instead of putting it up there right away. Okay, so remember, when we're looking at F prime, uh, make sure that's distinct. F prime, F prime of X, whether or not it's above or below the X axis. So everywhere it's zero, where it crosses the X axis, I'm going to mark it. All right, and for F double prime everywhere, it changes concavity in the market in those two places. So F prime, uh, below zero here, above zero between those two, and below here, that's not a subtraction, and above here. Okay, so we have, it must be positive slope, negative slope, positive slope, negative slope, positive slope. Okay. We have. F double prime. Okay, now it's going up right here. We got positive over here. Okay, from here out to the right, we have negatives. It's always negative. And from till it gets zero, we got an inflection point. Those two points, and then the slope becomes positive everywhere after. Okay. So what does that graph look like? Okay, let me translate translate those lines. Go here, here. And here, over prime one, just double prime is right about just before the three, right there, and right around where the one is. Okay. So we have negative slope here, concave up. Okay, negative slope, concave up right here, changes. Uh, right there is the inflection point, right here. Where it goes from concave up to concave down. Sorry, it's not very precise. Then we have a max right there. Then it goes down. We have another inflection point right there. And then concave up. All right. Looks about right to me. Okay. Got a possible answer. So here is where it changes concavity. Right here is where it changes concavity. Okay. And we have the max and the min. Another min here. All right, and for letter F. So try it. Three, two, one. Okay, we start with above and below. Changes there and everywhere else. The so slope's negative here. Everywhere else, the slope needs to be positive. It's always above the x-axis everywhere to the right of four. Okay. Now for the max and mins, right here right there so every everywhere before the first before negative two we have positive slopes so concave up everywhere afterwards in between negative two we have negative slopes so we have concave down and it goes back to positive slope okay so that graph looks like this and see if you came with something close to that okay use these use these examples to figure out um, problem two on the homework and don't hesitate, if you have any questions, send a text.